Welcome to the power shed. Uh, this is my Best Tech 2000 watt converter I bought a couple days ago and uh, I just got it working yesterday. There's some unique things about it. I don't recommend anyone buying one of these broken and trying to fix it. What they have is six 60 amp fuses in parallel. Uh, usually in a lot of inverters each fuse will power individually one of these transformers and so if you uh, have a shorted FET on the high voltage inverter it's going to uh, take out that single fuse it may do a bunch of damage but at least the damage is isolated and, and somewhat minimal this you can supply over 400 amps before the, the fuses ever go out so I mean you might as well not even do, use them uh, you know, all it does is maybe protect the wiring, but uh, I don't know how much wiring will, will take 400 amps either. You know, if you're at about 300 amps on wire that looks like this, it's just going to sit there and burn. So, mechanically this thing's kind of uh, crazy. Uh, the best thing about this inverter is the, is the handle, you know, I like that. The rest of it's kind of hokum. These two boards are identical. Uh, if you notice here, this is the uh, high voltage inverter driving board. And that powers these FETs that power these transformers. These are the rectifiers. And this is the H-bridge driver. And these four FETs are the H-bridge uh, FETs. And uh, these two boards are identical, except one doesn't have these driver boards and if you got one of these and it failed you could just totally take out this board uh, what they do is they feed the two DC's together and so the, the DC output from the uh, high voltage inverter is in parallel now uh, in some uh, there's a video somewhere where this guy took two cheap like 400 watt inverters that wouldn't drive anything and he just went in found the high voltage and connected the two high voltages together to uh, each of the supplies and then only used the output of one of the H bridges and he was able to start things without going into overload the uh, high voltage inverter tends to be the weakest part that takes the most current and uh, they will generally fail first but uh, you know, you can work on just uh, half a bridge. Now, if you notice, you've got these little gray things. This is a silicone insulator, and I have never seen this before. Uh, often they use just a big pad, or they use a, uh, a tubing sleeve that will fit over this. But uh, this is covered at the end, you know, kind of nice. And the FET just fits in there. This uses a 50N20 FET. That's a 50 amp, 200 volt. Uh, I actually stocked those, and I went in here first, removing the top board. The top board only mounts with one of the heat sinks. This heat sink is not even connected uh, physically to the outside case. So all those fins do you absolutely no good at all. Uh, the board mounts with uh, two holes on one side and then it slides out it's a very tight mess I've unsoldered a couple wires so I can fold this out for you but when you're checking a FET check the two outside pins for resistance the gate always shorts almost always just in a rare instance uh, these will short and the gate will stay a high impedance but almost always these short now, gates can be connected to uh, other FETs in parallel, so you can have a shorted FET over here, and uh, the, uh, if you sense the ohms, the ohms will be going through uh, two uh, gate drive resistors, which will be anywhere from 5 to 20 ohms, and, uh, you know, you might have a, a couple of FETs that look like they have a shorted gate. Go in and measure all the, the, the gate resistances and remove the one that's the lowest resistance first. 
you know, chances are the other ones will come up to a, a normal high impedance after that. But I didn't follow my own advice. I took out this uh, high side FET and uh, that was definitely shorted. And then I checked the other one and that showed shorted but not on the gate just from the source to the drain. And I removed the wires that connected the two boards together and it still had that so I figured well this must be one of those rare circumstances so I pulled this fat out perfectly good so I knew the short must be on the other board somehow but first thing I did was I removed this connector and you know these are only like number 24 wires I can't believe these two boards connect with that on their power outputs but you know considering everything else they've done and so I found that this FET was shorted. So it's just like this. These two shorted. But one was on one board, one was on the other. So I've pulled that FET out. I pulled this one out. And I put the good FET in here. So I have, a, I have a full H bridge on this side. And I have half an H bridge on this side. And that's good enough for me because I'm never going to be doing anywhere near 2000 watts with this. I like to run these inverters at just like a couple hundred watts disconnect the fans and only turn them on for what uh, I want to use them for so I do this with the refrigerator I have some old Harbor Freight 2000 watt inverters and they came in I found the FET shorted and it's like I don't really care I just wiggled the FET till it fell out and uh, that was it that was my repair and so the, the, the weakest part of these uh, uh, any inverter is the high voltage uh, boost transformers uh, there's a guy with a uh, video on uh, YouTube that he had a uh, two small identical inverters and these the high voltage is wired together this is the DC voltage and he did that same thing he ran uh, DC wires from one inverter to the other and then he was able to start the devices he wanted to. Generally, the uh, these FETs can handle much more current than what is really required for the inverter. So I have a nice uh, Harbor Freight there. You know, it, it starts out with like 120 amps current draw. It uh, runs that fine. So you could actually eliminate one board if you found it was really bad because it's identical. But, you know, you got to hope that the board that's still good has these uh, drive boards on it. So, as I said, I turn on my inverter on the refrigerator. I like these inverters with the switch. So I'll go and uh, connect the wire onto the switch side. And I'll just put a banana jack there so I can remotely turn it on and off from, like, my microprocessor. And... Uh, you want to when you do switch you want to make sure you have something with a very low resistance because this voltage line is what they sense for low voltage so you know you can't just put a transistor in there that may have a, a half volt drop on it or something but uh, this is why I've done I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't buy another one of these and uh, this one will be fine it's 30 bucks shipped you know it's not a bad price to pay but uh, yeah I can't believe they put all those fuses in parallel because there is just no protection for this board if something shorts out it's going to be a real mess so uh, that's my story for today thanks for watching <laughs>